Welcome back to the news at 10, talking about our eyewitness feature. And we're going to share some of the pictures that we have in. We begin with this one showing cows moving along this road in Abuja, the federal capital territory. Our eyewitness reporter calls on relevant authorities to prohibit such acts. The next one shows these men pushing a faulty commercial bus in Ikeja, the Lagos state capital. Our eyewitness reporter commends their collective effort. And here's one from Zamfara Sokoto Highway. It shows the aftermath of a road accident involving a trailer loaded with bags of cement. Our eyewitness reporter calls on motorists to adhere to speed limits. And finally we have this photo and it shows a bad road in Ajumar community in Ogun State. Our eyewitness reporter calls on state authorities to fix it and construct drains. Airtel, the smartphone network. Thanks a lot for all those pictures. Do send us some more. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture today started the rehabilitation of grazing reserves in four local government areas of Kaduna State. The acting national coordinator, grazing reserve and stock route development at the ministry, Ishak Bello, announced this during a sensitization meeting with the Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association. The Kaduna State Government has several grazing reserves, some of which were established over 70 years ago. Over time, host communities of the reserves have come under deadly attacks due to frequent clashes between farmers and herdsmen. This meeting is therefore aimed at finding a solution to these problems. After this sensitization process, we will submit a report to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria with our recommendations so that government can back it up with policies and funds. As part of efforts to revive the grazing routes, the State Implementation Committee on Grazing Development has dedicated land for the purpose. The committee, in conjunction with the Ministry of Agriculture, is planting 130 hectares of pasture, community pasture development in these four reserves and also have give 90 persons, individuals, to develop homestead pasture within their locations. Other stakeholders say apart from addressing the frequent clashes between herdsmen and farmers, the reserve will lessen the problem of cattle rustling and armed banditry. With this joint action committee, committee that has been formed, a way bill that is approved by the federal government and being endorsed by the Nigerian security agencies will be in Introduce, whereby in every cattle market, any trader in livestock will be issued a way bill and security agencies will intercept any vehicle transporting live animals and request for that way bill. Once that way bill is not there, it implies that those animals may likely be stolen animals. The bill for the establishment of National Grazing Reserves and Development Commission for the Preservation and Control of National Grazing Reserves and Stock Routes has passed the second reading at the Senate. Implementing strategies to thrive in a volatile economy as a female entrepreneur was the focus of discussions at an event held by the Women in Management, Business and Public Service, WIMBIS. Participants called on Nigerian women to explore the non-oil sectors of the economy as part of efforts to create wealth. Our correspondent Linda Akigbe reports. A hall filled with women and a trickling of men. Venue is the Musa Yeradwa Center in Abuja. These are no ordinary women. They are captains of industry, female entrepreneurs, and women in public service. They are here to discuss strategies for thriving in today's volatile economy. How many other women farmers are there in the room? With slumping oil prices, inflation, and a depreciating currency, these are not easy times for business owners, especially women. The Women in Management, Business and Public Service, WIMBIS, put together this event for women to learn from each other on how to thrive and leverage and the opportunities in a dynamic Nigerian economy. The 
women listened to the keynote speaker who gave insights on how women can take advantage of the economic slump to conquer new frontiers in commerce and industry. This is the time to seize opportunities to invest, not lament. What are the opportunities, what are the alternative sources of foreign exchange? What are the opportunities in economic diversification? What kinds of innovation are needed to maximize emerging potentials? Some of the participants also suggested a few pointers for businesswomen to stay afloat in these difficult times. Ask yourself what your business is about. Ask yourself what kind of structures and systems you need in place. Get help from a consultant to review your business and tell you these are the things that are wrong. These are the things you may need to do to move forward. Women don't have enough information on how to structure their business, the right processes to put in place, financial planning, keeping records, keeping books, uh, marketing strategies and all that. Find ways to look inwards, to find opportunities locally. We can't continue to depend on, oh, I'm buying clothes from the States and I'm bringing, here to, bringing them here to sell. It doesn't work anymore. If there is one thing these women agree on, is that the economic downturn presents an opportunity for Nigerian women to be bold and seize opportunities to invest intelligently and break new territories in business and industry. Linda. The economic principle of buy local and save foreign exchange comes to the fore once again as the Anambra state governor, Willie Obiano, reveals plans to commence supply of sorghum when he paid a visit to Interfact Beverages Limited in Onisha. This is Interfact Beverages Plant Limited, located in Onitsha, a number of states. The plant was commissioned in 2012 with an initial investment of 100 million US dollars, with Hero Lager Beer and Grand Malt being the major drinks. But between 2014 and now, it has grown above 250 million US dollars investment, with a production capacity of 2.7 million hectolitres per annum, which represents 50% production increase. Excited about the growth of the company is the number one man of the state, Governor Willy Obiano, who is here with his team to show support and his will to supply brewing ingredients through his agricultural revolution, especially that of sorghum. Happy to learn that uh, the sales have increased significantly. I did ask for their support in helping me to light up Anambra. We also discussed uh, some guys' interest in supplying them the sorghum that will be used uh, for brewing uh, here over here. Before now, this uh, very important ingredient is supplied from South Africa, among other places. You know, and we want it to be supplied from Anambra State because we can do that. And I'm happy that uh, by the first quarter of next year, uh, this uh, deal will be actualized. The general manager of Interfact Beverages, Mr. Lucas van der Venter, appreciates him for his support and promise to create an investment future for the people of the state. And we endeavour to make sure that we, we do not disappoint um, our shareholders of this and the government is, is a shareholder. So we, we will endeavour to grow again and, and make sure that we, we grow the investment uh, for the future and make sure we invest uh, into, into the, the rest of the communities. A number of state government, as a shareholder in Interfact Beverages Plant Limited, owns 10% shares. With the massive growth recorded so far, this may be a good sign that will attract more investors into the state. Speaking about investment and all, let's move on to some business. Here's Melinda Hakilami. You first. First Bank. Thank you so much, Ijoma. Welcome to Business News. South Africa has regained its position as Africa's largest economy in U.S. dollar terms, more than two years after losing it to Nigeria. A Bloomberg News report explains that based on a 2015 gross domestic product published by the International Monetary Fund, the size of South Africa's economy is $301 billion at the RAND's current exchange rate of 13.2 to the greenback. Nigeria now returns to the second position at a GDP figure of $296 billion. 
Bloomberg quoted Mr. Alan Cameron, an economist as exotic partners in London, who says that the momentum that took Nigeria to Africa's number one spot in the first place is now gone. Shareholders of Sovereign Trust Insurance have given their approval for the 2015 financial statement. It was granted at the company's annual meeting today, where investors supported the appointment of new directors. Having seen a 97% rise in profits in 2015, it's time for the shareholders of Sovereign Trust Insurance to fulfill the annual meeting obligation. There are six ordinary businesses for deliberation, but top on the list is the approval of the financial statement and the new directors of the company. And After this question and answer session, the new chairman, Mr. Lucian Ajayi, explains the strategies for the company's negative retained earnings. We, we've done a lot about it. We've really kept it and we're even reducing it. But we'll still watch it in a way that it will help deliver the profit that will take us out of the uh, negative retained earnings. With strong determination to deliver profits, the new team also looks forward to improvements in its balance sheet as a new audit firm comes on board. Us and Young, uh, they are one of the biggest uh, you know, accounting firms in Nigeria, and we expect that you know, they will give us very valuable advice and make sure that you know, they, they leave no stones unturned so that the accounts of the company will be you know, as good as it has ever been. Based on the strategies we put in place in the first half, we expect a, second, a, very, a better second half of the year. And, uh, and I can assure you, by, at the end of the year, by 31st de December, the result will be much better than that of 2015. I'm just the chairman of the board. We're all working as a team. As you must have noticed, we have new directors and we have a new management team. So we're all ready. We have our sleeves all rolled up to ensure that the task is done. Sovereign Trust had a revenue of 5.09 billion naira in 2015. Its earnings per share also grew 23%. The new board believes that its vision to beat the negative retained earnings is the antidote for a more profitable 2016. The Nigerian equities market bounces back after two days of losses. Market cap went up by 51.4 billion naira, as Jockey Rogers tells us more about today's figures. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Nigeria's equities market recovered by 0.55% at the close of Wednesday's trading after two bear recessions as investors cheered the CBN's intervention to lift the Naira at the interbank market on Tuesday. Now this recovery was reflected on the price table with 19 gainers against 21 losers. Ikeja Hotels, UAC Property Development Company and International Breweries, as you can see, were the top gainers, while seven up. CAP ended as the major losers. The market breadth was quite moderate as a total of 391.37 million shares valued at over 3.39 billion naira were traded in 3,103 deals. From that turnover, WAPIC, GT Bank and FBN Holdings garnered the most patronage from the investors. And that's it on the Stock Market Report. I'm Jockey Rogers. And with those figures, we wrap up business news. Many thanks for watching. I'm Melinda Akinami. You first. First Bank. Next to the news at 10, Nigeria's Dream Team 6 makes five changes to its starting 11 for the football match against Colombia at the Rio 2016 Olympics. So that's on sports. Just stay with us.